Welcome to this new episode and today I am with Eyal. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Very good. Eyal is a DJ in Copangan involved with ecstatic dance, which is one of my favorite things. And uh, his uh, DJ name is No One Under. So, Eyal, can you tell us a little bit more about your background? I mean, how did you come into playing ecstatic dance? Um, I was, I love music. And I, I heard music since I was in my mother's belly. Mm -hmm. uh, they played, you know, classical music. And I, I grew up with a lot of different kinds of music, you know, in Israel, multicultural society and family. And all my life, you know, I was, I was the kid uh, making the cassette, you know, compilations and, you know, putting on the, the music in the party and the, sh and the lights and everything. So all my life it was a hobby. And then a few years ago, I finally chose to go into it professionally. And since then, I'm just, you know, waking up in the morning, I'm like, I just have to do it. It's not, it's not a choice, even. It's, it's kind of like life is telling me, do this. And, and it's showing me that, that this is my biggest passion. And um, yeah, it's amazing. And specifically, ecstatic dance. That's lovely. And I know that, of course, you play on the island. At the same time, you're also a music producer. You make your own music, is yeah, that I right? Yeah, I started, yeah. Uh -huh. just, it's, it's, a, it's a long start. It takes time. DJing is easier, you know, in some way, because, you know, I play amazing musicians that are doing it for 20 years, you know. But to make, it, it's, like, it's like facing a blank page and then having to, to put something there. And, and then it's, you know, what do I even want to play? What do I want to listen to? What do I want to create? And there's a lot of questions. So I did a lot of things. I have one uh, label release also. That oh. was really, really nice. So. so much fun, you know. I think uh, what is fun about it is the creative process, you know. And then if you're producing uh, art of different types, uh, music, uh, it's just so good for the soul, isn't yeah. it? Producing uh, something which is your own and creative in nature. Yeah. But tell me a little bit more about your uh, take on ecstatic dance, because uh, I interviewed uh, Shai, and of course uh, ecstatic dance is uh, you know, one of my favorite things, so I know all the DJs, etc. And I can tell that every DJ is a little bit different, obviously, because they bring the, a bit of their own to, to, the, to, the, to the session, right? Yeah. So how would you characterize your ecstatic dance? So my ecstatic dance is called Sacred Rhythms, mm -hmm. and the idea with sacred rhythms is that it brings ecstatic dance back to what for me is the, is the journey, is the sacred journey. Uh, it's not so much a party, okay? Some, some places people consider it more, more like a party. For me, it's a sacred journey that can be internal or can be connected with other people. Um, and there is, if I can uh, talk about the, the principles of ecstatic dance, which are really dear to me, the most important one is no talking. Sure. And, um, you know, I love talking, but also in ecstatic dance, I love it that there's no talking. Because the moment there's talking, something activates my mind and people's minds. So, you know, it's similar to Vipassana, similar to other traditions where you have a few hours or a few days or a few weeks where you don't talk. And for me, that's amazing. Um, and also, we are able to make sounds. So it's not, it's not being completely silent. It's actually inviting us to express ourselves through non non-verbal, like non-words, but still make a lot of sounds. And there's, there's like, like animals, like children. Sure. You know? uh, there's no drugs and alcohol. Again, drugs and alcohol are okay in certain conditions, uh, but it allows us to be sober. And instead of intensifying something or, you know, uh, heightened state of consciousness, uh, different state of consciousness through substances, we do it through the body, through movement, through music. Okay? Sure. So that's another thing. Uh, we dance without shoes, that on this island it's very obvious, but in the West it's not obvious. I danced in you know, different places in the world and some, some people go in with their shoes. They, they're like, what do you mean take off my shoes? I want my dancing shoes. You know? So it allows us to connect to the ground. Uh, there's no mobile phones. And again, I love mobile phones, they're amazing. But during this journey, we go in. Because sometimes on a mobile phone, you switch out of what's going on around you. Mm. Okay, you're literally in a different zone. Sure. So this is amazing to let go of the need to distract and to numb, and instead to go like, oh, connection to another, oh, connection to myself. So uh, It's wonderful ecstatic dance. The way I experience it is that, you know, after a, a few minutes, maybe a 20 minutes or so, when I start going in the flow, I really feel, uh, you know, the body almost moving on its own. And uh, the mind, as you said, you know, is uh, enter more of a meditative space, if you want. 
and it's slightly detached from the body. And I feel the energy of the people around me. I feel lots of beautiful sensations. And it's so uplifting in terms of mood, you know. I feel amazing afterwards. And, you know, it's something I do all the time. And uh, it's certainly a beautiful thing to do. And let's hope that it becomes more popular back in the West as well. I think there are Berlin, I know, is a good place for that. London, there are some places. It's, it's, becoming, it's becoming really... So I started around 2012 with Five Rhythms and Ecstatic Dance. And over, over the past decade, it's really expanding. I lived in Amsterdam. In Amsterdam, nearly every day of the week, there's ecstatic dance in different places. Mm -hmm. And what I like about Amsterdam, that they're really clear about those agreements of ecstatic dance, you know? Mm -hmm. And you know, if somebody's talking on the dance floor, you know, three participants would come and tell them, you know, shh. So that's really nice that that's, sure. that's respected. And for me also, ecstatic dance is about all aspects and all colors of being human. So we think about ecstatic, we think it's just, you know, like this, you know, joy and ecstasy and happiness. It can be also ecstatic sadness. So I put some, some songs which are really sad and heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. and some a woman told me recently that it was the first, my ecstatic dance was the first time that she cried in ecstatic dance. Wow. So that's, for me, I was like, yes. It's like I, I managed to connect people into that. Anger as well. Mm -hmm. Anger is something which is something not, not so much accepted in society. It's considered, you know, wrong or aggressive. But if you can give a healthy outlet to your anger and express it on the dance floor sure. and put some track, you know, rage, the, rage Against the Machine or something like this, okay? It can be an amazing expression. So yeah, happiness, of course, as well, but everything else. I totally agree with you. And uh, there is a concept which is uh, very popular in Copangan and very important in a sort of spiritual uh, space is uh, the concept of the shadow where, uh, yes. of course, you know, we are uh, beings and we have uh, positive emotions of what, uh, you know, culture would perceive as uh, good emotions. And then we also have some, uh, you know, desires and some repressions and some uh, traumas that, uh, you know, we tend to kind of hide a little bit. And it's extremely important indeed to have a channel of expression, which is benign and healthy to feel these emotions, maybe embody them just, you know, during a set or something, yeah. let them go and relieve them that way. Because of course, you know, it's the Jungian, uh, uh, concept and you know, if you repress, 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 then it's going to come out in a way or another, which is going to yeah. be very unhealthy yeah. or even dangerous for, for, for people in society, yeah. right? like, uh, like it happened historically. For me, it's about the daily life. It's about being a good person. It's about being connected to yourself, to your community, to the world, to nature. It's, it's th there's different levels of connection. So just spirit, spirit, spirit. I don't, I don't even use this word so much anymore. Um, so yeah, peak experiences are great and they give us a glimpse. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's about, it's about the daily life. You know, how do I do everything that I do? Do I bring awareness into what I do? Do I live in the best way which is aligned with my values? Not just the spiritual values, but my, you know, my environmental values. Every time I go on a visa run or a trip and I need to buy a, a plastic bottle, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, I'm a bit sad that I need to buy a plastic bottle. So, yeah, bringing this to all of, all of our life and not just to the ayahuasca journey or to whatever that is. So tell me a little bit more about Eyal and Copangan, this uh, relationship you have with the island. How long you been here on and off? I came first time 20 years ago. So, so wow. 2001, late 2001. That's amazing, yeah? Eh? Yeah, yeah. Piece of history. <laughs> yes, yes. I, uh, there was a longer, longer story to it. I bought, um, I bought an apartment in Tel Aviv in my 20s. I was working in the high-tech industry and stuff. I was making good money and kind of like life was on a... Life was on, um, not on a rut, but kind of like I knew where I was going. You know, I had a career, I was, you know, I had a girlfriend, I was buying a house, everything went in a mainstream way. Yeah. And then I bought this apartment, I was about to move into it, um, and then I didn't sleep in the night. Some, some, some woman told me, ah, oh, you never went uh, traveling like, like most of the Israeli guys do, mm -hmm. Israeli people do, uh, after the army. I said, yeah, I never went traveling, I immediately started businesses and had a career and so on. And then that night I didn't sleep. I, f I thought, well, if I go into this apartment, I'm not gonna travel. I didn't think about subletting, yeah. But I'm not gonna travel. And then in the morning I woke up and I decided I'm going to do a few months of traveling just so I could see the East, just so I could see Cambodia that I saw in National Geographic, yeah. just so I go to India and Nepal. And I went to uh, a two months uh, journey that became six months, that became nearly two years. And I came here and my life changed. 
And that's what it is with Copangan, you know, once you come here and uh, over 20 years, the island has changed probably so much, so many times right? yeah. and keep on changing it. And, sure. it's, and it's still good. So people say, yeah, it's more commercial. Yes, it is more commercial, but it's OK. You know, the way of the world is changed or Nietzsche, as they say in Vipassana. And and it's it's OK. Also, you know, there's some things which are which are easy and and nice and more comfortable compared to 20 years ago. For sure, for yeah. sure. Like, an, I mean, technology can be seen uh, as a good thing, as a bad thing. I think the right measure of technology is great and life improving. So yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't give, we got like um, good infrastructure, fast internet. Definitely. Yeah, and good coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's like, I look, I look now behind you, you know, the camera shows us, but sure. there's, there's a, islands in a nat national uh, national marine park and we're looking at the ocean and yeah oh, this yeah. is still there you know and there's there's untouched jungle just five minutes walk very pristine here. and beautiful yeah so so yeah these things are still here also because Copangan, of course a big chunk of the island is national park so they yeah. cannot touch it which is wonderful and uh, yeah that's our beautiful place. So what is uh, your plan for the future? I mean, uh, are you, I mean, it's difficult these days, you know, with all the uncertainty of the world to uh, make a clear plan. And also Copangan people tend not to have like a set plan so much, but maybe you're different. Um, in my life, I, sometimes I, I had goals and I had a, I, like a bucket list. I needed to tick this and this and this off the list. And, and right now I have, I have ideas, I have aspirations, I have yearnings, and I'm also open to whatever life gives me. So I'm, yeah, it's kind of like being, being focused, but also being in the flow. Sure. So, so yes, I see myself going deeper and deeper into ecstatic dance and into music production, but I'm also bringing my previous experiences, meditation, tantra, sacred sexuality, conscious way of living into the spaces that I hold. Mm -hmm. And for me, this is, this is, again, the integration of everything that I am as a person and all my 40-something years of, of life, bringing them into these uh, spaces and making them simple. So I have, a, I have this line called Sacred Rhythms Ecstatic Dance, mm -hmm. and I'm really starting to make it more and more and more like I want, you know, like the kind of event that I want to attend. So, so it's growing. It's growing really, really nicely, so I'm, I'm, um, I'm growing that. I'm also DJing in other um, things which are not ecstatic dance, mm -hmm. where I'm focused on. Ecstatic dance is also multiple genres, and it goes from slow to ecstatic and back to slow, and you know it's all like this. But sometimes I like to make a journey, which is just two hours of African house, you know, which is not ecstatic dance. So that's that's really beautiful to just dive deep into into one thing. Um, so in terms of that, that's DJing and also producing music. I'm, I'm kind of like put it put it on the shelf for a little bit, just because life tells me no. Right now you're going to all of these genres of music to study them, and then you go back to produce. Uh, and really, I'm 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 going on on journeys where I suddenly discover this uh, this African really really angry music, which is really beautiful, or Brazilian baila funk, or whatever whatever the genre is, and and. It's like I'm feeling like I discovered a new world uh -huh. or music from 40 years ago or 50 years ago. Um, so, yeah, that's one thing I'm going into producing more uh, later. And also one of the things that I do other than music is nature. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited about nature and I'm hiking. I love uh, fresh water. I, I have discovered like nature pools and small streams. And Beautiful, yeah. points and and sometimes by, by serendipity, by synchronicity, I just I just walk somewhere and suddenly there's this pool in the middle of nowhere. And so yeah. It's amazing. So really excited about that. By the way, my DJ name, uh, which I gave myself, I chose myself, is Now Ananda. Ah. So the now time, Ananda. The time yes. is now yes. and Ananda is bliss. So it's the bliss of the present moment. And if people are interested in uh, hearing my music and also the dance journeys, they can find me now Ananda on SoundCloud and on Facebook and I share a lot like I upload a lot of the stuff that I play live so I upload it then to SoundCloud so it's then shared with the world so yeah I'm very very passionate about that's it. That's beautiful so if you come to Copangan whenever you can and you know you want to meet uh, Eyal I'm sure he's gonna be around because you know he's been here for 20 years. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>